Donald Trump now saying that he will vote against a Florida measure to expand abortion rights a day after signaling that he might support that same measure. Joining me now is former uh, Trump White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. Uh, Anthony, so much, uh, thank you so much for, for being with us. Um, despite saying six week, a six-week abortion ban is too early, just yesterday Trump said that, he's now saying that he'll vote to keep one in place in Florida, which of course is his home state where he votes. And now he's waffling on whether he would sign a national abortion ban. So what do you think that that says about his mindset, his approach to this issue right now? Well, he's done a very good job of the last nine years of saying two contradictory things at the exact same time and giving enough food for everybody at the table. You know, he did that with the Charlottesville case. He said there were very fine people on both sides. And a day later, he had denounced it. And this way, the people that are gaslit by Donald Trump, they can hang on to those sentences and those words. And so that's what he's doing right now. He's shotgunning out statements and words. Uh, the conservatives in his party are calling him up saying, you can't do that. Many of these pro-life conservatives will not come out to vote for you. You have a uh, low ceiling at 47.5%. You've never been able to punch through that. You need every one of these votes. And so he equivocates and goes back to out there and says what he said today. But he's in trouble. He knows it. And the interesting conversation you guys are having before the break, it's going to be very hard for women, even conservative women, to give up their reproductive freedoms to J.D. Vance and Donald Trump. And he knows that. He's got very good political instincts. And so this is a vexing problem for him right now. And in terms of how he approaches, approaches a variety of issues, you know, he's been going after Kamala Harris as a flip-flopper. Do you think what he's doing here is, is going to get him in some trouble for doing basically the same thing? So it should get him into trouble, but it never does. This is the one of the more fascinating things about uh, former President Trump. He's able to get away with these things and people let him off the hook. I think it's the rapidity of the lies. He told one lie every 90 seconds during the debate with Joe Biden in June, President Biden. Uh, he told 4,000, I think 30 I'm sorry, 30,450 lies, according to the Washington Post during its term as president. And so the perpetual lying gives him a lot of space to say a lot of different things that people don't necessarily take that seriously. On the flip side, you saw a very serious candidate running for president last night, as interviewed by Donna Bash. And what you saw there was an incredibly concise statements of policy that people take seriously. In terms of the landscape and, and the battleground states, there were some really interesting new numbers in a, in a Fox News poll uh, of the Sun Belt. Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, uh, those swing states, they found Harris and Trump neck and neck in all four of those states, all within the, the margin of error. Uh, it is not the race that Trump was expecting, not the race that he had a couple months ago. How much do you think that that's frustrating him in his campaign? I think it's frustrating him, but I, if I was on the Harris side, though, I would tell them that he under polls, and so he may be up a little bit more than that, and they've got to dig in and work very hard in those areas of the country. Now, she could have a breakout moment with more interviews. She could have a breakout moment in the September 10th debate, uh, but if I'm, her, if, I'm, if I'm on her campaign, I'm recommending she pushes very, very hard in those areas because she could put him on the run if she opens up a... Uh, an ideas lead and a policy lead, because he's not really that substantive at this point in his political career. And, and speaking of that interview uh, that our colleague Dana Bash did with Kamala Harris uh, yesterday, uh, Trump has respond, responded. He called Harris low energy, uh, but he said not too much about the substance uh, of the interview. What does that tell you? He's pressured by her, the content of her policy. He's sitting there, he said very derogatory things about her, which I won't mention on this air, but he's looking at her he's saying, wait a minute, the things I'm saying about her doesn't match up with the content that she's providing right now. And he's worried about it. And so he's trying to figure out if he can outmuscle her or bully her without being substantial. And I think he's going to be surprised by her. I think she's consistently outperforming and she's consistently exceeding expectations of her. Uh, and she's going to be a very formidable candidate come November. Yeah, and he's reposted some pretty nasty things about her as well. Anthony Scaramucci, and that, thanks. And that's shameful, by the way. I mean, that is disgusting stuff. I hope people pay attention to that. It's very shameful what he's yeah. posting. Yeah. Uh, well, Anthony Scaramucci, appreciate your time. Thank you.